Hi, good morning. Uh, today, our speaker is well known for his global expertise in profiling and the author of the new book, uh, Profiling for Profit. And he also the chairman of the Evolutionary Healer, which is the uh, international performance improvement company. We are very honored to have you here with us today. Thanks for joining us and thanks for helping me on the show as well. So the first questions, a little bit uh, to get familiar with you. Can you share a bit about yourself? Uh, to the audience here and your career into this expert uh, field of profiling? Well, like some of you who may be listening today who, who come from or live in mountains, various places of the world, uh, the Western Rocky Mountains uh, of the United States is where I was born and raised through uh, high school. Uh, after, after high school, I uh, joined the U.S. Navy and I served for 20 years and saw most of the world had uh, most delightful experiences. And um, uh, let's see, a couple of uh, degrees from college uh, in marketing and uh, back late last century, it was called personnel management, it's now resource management or something like that. And, and so... After my Navy time, uh, I didn't know who I was, so I just started taking jobs in different industries, and and uh, turned out to be this 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 almost diaspora of uh, this plenty of of uh, jobs and and experience has really created the opportunity for me to now. Uh, you mentioned profiling for profit, which. Uh, uh, I'm a lifelong uh, people watcher, so mm -hmm. I used to, I I started observing uh, certain things people did unconsciously with their heads and and movement of their bodies and things like that when they were st stressed positively and negatively, and uh, started making those observations. And after about 35 years, I, I wrote the book uh, Profiling for Profit: What Crossed Arms Don't Tell You. And, you know, we, we generally know that if, if we're not buying something, we usually cross our arms and yes. get stern. And, and that doesn't mean anything. That is a learned response. But subconsciously, if I'm listening to you and I dip my head to my left like I'm doing right now, I, I am not only understanding you, but I'm receiving you and I'm holding you in a good place subconsciously and so when you're talking to someone uh, like I'm talking to both of you right now with your heads tilted slightly to the left and you don't even know it you yeah. you trust me you're listening to what I'm saying and we're we're both we're having this fourth white open conversation there's a lot more to it in the book and it's a short book I like to say I write airplane books about an hour an hour and a half worth of reading and you're done and, and so that's where Profiling for Profit came from. Uh, just this week, I launched my eighth book, which is Consortium, Business Model for the 21st Century, where we change the business di dynamic and the business model upside down, basically. We focus on the people uh, in our companies, not the bottom line and the timelines and the goals and those kinds of things. And uh, Sir Richard Branson puts it so nicely, Pay, take care of your people, they'll take care of your customers. Mm -hmm. So that concept is, re is really centric to what we're talking about. So being people centric in your company and uh, using achievement milestones towards a, uh, the achievement of a vision is much more powerful and a whole lot less problems with, with people. I'll, I'll let you two uh, think of a time as I am right now about uh, achieving something really great, how good you felt and exciting it was, and you wanted to do it again. Perhaps you achieved something with a group or a, a, a soccer team or, or anything like that, and the group was ready to do it again. Well, how'd you like to do that in your company? Here's what I found out over the years. When you have a company full of people and groups of people who are regularly achieving, the following th observations are consistent. They are healthier, 
They, uh, the sick time is reduced to, to minuscule. So they, they don't burn out and they don't leave the company. You're not going to leave this fabulous group of people you're having so much fun with uh, and go somewhere else uh, for anything, basically. Uh, there's some exceptions, certainly. But the basic rule is, is that. It also uh, gives opportunities for not so good leaders, let's say, to become really good leaders because they don't have to uh, perform every day in a role they're not comfortable with within their own persona. And so uh, if everybody's getting along on a one-on-one -on -one basis, the, the leader of the company's door is open all the time. You walk up, you knock on, ask for permission to come in. And if it's no, no worries. If it's yes, you come right in and respectfully uh, have your conversation with your boss. You know, you just don't walk in. Hey, I, I want to talk to you. And they're on the phone and they're looking at you like, what are you doing? You know, uh, those are really good examples of the new consortium business model. And, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, we have a company. Uh, my wife and I uh, started our company 10 years ago this coming May. And we were a mom and pop operation, just the two of us, husband and wife. And we work with uh, health and wellness professionals to help transform their themselves and their business into successful people. And that morphous, metamorphosized, uh, you know, the, it just kept blossoming and kept blossoming. That model 10 years ago doesn't even exist anymore. The, we have four divisions. Our company is global. We're on six continents, 17 countries, 27 U.S. states. I have 48 practitioners all over the world. We do business in six languages. And uh, everybody's happy. We're real wide, but we're not real tall. And we work out of our homes, right? Why have an office building when all of the people that are that are key to our, uh, you know, like our uh, accounting people, they're in their own place. You know, our, our uh, operations person, she's in, she's out of her home in Canada. So it's, you know, it's just, it works and it fits. It's the 21st century, you know. We don't have to have this mega building, all right. It works for us, all right. Now, if we have 280,000 employees, everybody working at home may not have the same dynamic. However, the principle of achievement and achieving a vision that you have sent yourself for in the in the future. Here's the best example of what I say, uh, how to use a vision strategy. You create this vision that's on the horizon ahead of you. And as you go towards it, the horizon keeps going. You never get to the horizon, okay? You get to presence wherever you are, but you never get to the horizon. But here's one thing, you have to get a roadmap put together so that you can achieve ultimately your vision. And we know if you were going from your home right now in Vietnam to uh, grandma's, uh, you know, a uh, few hundred uh, kilometers away, uh, there's going to, you're going to stop for gas and, and the kids are going to need to the restroom and, and somebody's going to need to eat. You just don't have a timeline for all of that. You're not going to do one an hour and 22 minutes from now, I'm going to stop and get some gas. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. When, when it's time to get gas, you get the gas. So it's a task towards the achievement of getting to grandma's house. So a company can use those same pretexts that if you don't have goals and timelines constantly hanging over your head, there's none there to, to miss. There's none to um, be responsible for because when people are working hard and achieving and they're happy, they do more than what's expected. They achieve greater sales uh, uh, mm. levels. All of those kinds of things happen. And how you're in sales, you know, when everybody's happy, things are clicking, money's coming in, right? So- yes. The, the, the same thing is, is true in business as it is uh, taken off to grandmother's house. 
So when you're done with getting the gas, you go, yay, we're done with the gas. Now we have enough gas to get to our vision or grandmother's house. So everybody uh, says that was fabulous, right? But what happens if there's construction and uh, or a traffic accident where you're held up, all right? You just sit there and wait it out, okay? You haven't lost anything because you're not relating to time. You're relating to the ultimate vision of getting to grandma's house. So if a COVID comes along in your company, you just, instead of closing everything, you get groups together in different divisions. Banks are really good because banks have branches, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you first make sure everybody's happy and then uh, they're safe. And then you get them together remotely or, or if it's possible to, to go into your, your bank branch and get together. <clears throat> okay, COVID's here or the next pandemic and there's going to be more. The, um, what are we going to do? Our, our corporate says that our office is not as efficient as it should be. So rather than try to make the office more efficient, maybe uh, we have a lot of people because of the COVID is going to lose their houses. Maybe we retrain everybody in that bank branch to become mortgage service officers and help their community stay in their homes and not have to close that bank branch forever. Okay, the old business model is just close it, write it off, uh, let the tax accountants figure it out. Now it's being responsible for your community. And when you're responsible for your community, you don't think about closing and write-offs and losing that talent that, that your company has spent a lot of time, energy, and money on to get them to where they are. And then all of a sudden, you let them go. There's something wrong with that picture, right? So let the, they're free to go anytime they want if they, if, if, the, if they want. But why get rid of them? Figure out a way to keep them. How about this one? Mortgage services will help people in the community keep in their houses and help you save some mortgages for your company. But what if uh, mortgage services uh, wasn't a good idea for that bank branch? Maybe that bank branch getting together as, as a team, as their own little community, and they figure out a new business model for that branch that drives new revenue. Why do you want to close a bank branch if it's driving a new revenue stream? Not the best idea, but you're going to be open to it. Your stakeholders, your, your, all of your uh, shareholders, they understand up and down, and they're going to stay with you during the downs because they, have, they know you have a vision, and those stocks are going to come back up. So these are the different things that I'm doing right now that are, that, and speaking internationally along these same lines. Uh, although uh, COVID has uh, kept me from that for a while, except for here on the internet, and I and I've keynoted uh, mm -hmm. the last couple of years, and so the uh, 2022 is looking good that we're going to be able to. I'm going to be able to get up on stage again. That's where that's where I'm at my best is in front of people, so that that profiling for profit knowledge comes to real. Because I'll tell you, I can have a scripted speech in front of me, even on a teleprompter, and I won't read that whole thing. I'll read everybody what they're doing and, and what they're understanding in the audience through my presentation, and that's where I will go, okay? Yeah. I've never finished a planned speech since I left college. So, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and I'm best that way, ad libbing, you know, reading responses in real time of people is, is very, very nice. And it's not the same thing as reading body language. Body language, mm -hmm. for the most part, people learn how to cross their, their legs in a certain way so they don't disrespect a, uh, somebody from another country, all of those kinds of things. Those are all body languages. But subliminal muscle movement, unconscious muscle movement, tells you in real time whether you're, the people you're talking to are getting your message. Mm -hmm. And to, to give them permission to enjoy the thing, you, you infuse one single question, but you ask it many, 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 many times. 
It's simply, does that make sense? Now, it's a nice, simple. 97% of the time, a person is going to respond, yes. The other 3% of the time, they, they don't understand, or they have a question, or they just don't want to respond. Here's the key to it, though. When they do respond with the yes, and it, it's your responsibility as the messenger to get them to say yes out loud, so their human ears hear their voice say the word yes. Mm. So that at the end of the presentation, uh, if you're doing a, a sales spec, if you're ready for the upsell, you're ready to uh, show them what you're here to, to, to sell them, they have permission and they've heard their voice say yes many times before they consciously make a decision to say yes to your product or service. So that, you know, does that make sense is a pretty powerful little question. Uh, yes, Terry, we will get back to the, the consortium uh, at a uh -huh. later time, okay. but I'm really intrigued to understand what happened in the uh, in 2019, uh, because a lot of your books coming from that period of time, uh, including the works, the pre works for the con uh, consortium also. What what was the tr tr the trigger points for that period though? Well, the fall of 2019. Mm. Uh, was uh, quite interesting because I was spending time thinking about the consortium model and, mm -hmm. and creating the theory behind it with the idea that in 2021 or 2022, uh, I'd have a book that uh, I could then send out. Um, the book is, is designed not to be a bestseller, uh, a best-selling book. It is a marketing piece. The book sells mm -hmm. the concept of the consortium model so that corporate heads can then contact me and my company uh, to contract with them to help them create that model and work with mm -hmm. them for three years. All right. So mm -hmm. um, you may have noticed on my LinkedIn uh, profile, for instance, the banner uh, photo is I'm uh, number 17 of the top 50 marketing influencers to follow in 2022. I'm yes. always thinking about um, different ways to market and, and do different things like that. So in 2019, um, my partner, my, my, my wife, uh, and I are, are looking at expanding uh, the coaching and consulting division. We have four divisions. Um, she runs one. She's come up with an ingenious way of helping people write a book in 30 days and self-publish it through uh, Amazon. And so she stays very busy with that. She's written 24 bo or 22 books, 23 books now, a lot of books. And um, so how is that with what I'm doing with Profiling for Profit, which had just came out and those kinds of things? And um, I was getting ready to arrange for some uh, book, book selling trips for the profile for profit when COVID hit. And, and uh, so then I, I, I started watching exactly what I was talking about in my theory for consortium happen mm -hmm. in real time. Okay, mm -hmm. the bank, bank closings and all of that, you know, and layoffs, uh, entire divisions closed and laid off. That's, mm. that's, that's traumatic. And so um, I, I would say um, also the fact, um, we hadn't talked about this yet. Uh, I am a uh, United Nations uh, Peace Ambassador at large. So I have the title of His Excellency Ambassador actually. And that's on my profile uh, too um that that certification and and uh my my shield and id and all those kinds of things for when i travel um came to me in in, in 2019 so there was a lot of shift about what's going on in those days right mm. so i hope that answered your question huh <laughs> 
Yes, I answer my question. Uh, Terry, I, uh, on your profile, I also read one quote is very interesting and, and uh, um, it says that uh, we are born with already established personality, right? Uh -huh. Yes. And, and by the time that as we age, then we become witness to uh, different kind of things that uh, stimulate our, uh, the way we look, the way we act, and it also shape the way that we change our personality. Or is that, or, or you know, can, so it means that we, are we, are our personality fit, or is that changing over time, in your opinion, Terry? Well, uh, the, the exact quote is we are already, we are born with an already established personality. And as we age, we become witness to various stimuli that affects the way we will act and react in this life. So in other words, uh, if you're constantly uh, being reinforced by your family to not like certain kinds of people or anything like that, that becomes part of your life. Uh, there and, and you can always change that, but it's very difficult because it's implanted early. Okay, it's like a, a bird who the the first thing that they see is usually their mother, and they implant on that. Well, what if the first thing they see is a human? Well, then becomes that becomes mother. All right. Now, how we act and react in the world is still our choices. Unfortunately, society for a very long time, uh, hundreds of years probably, loves to keep us picking at each other. So what does that mean? So um, if, if um, here's a good example. There are no good choices. There are no bad choices. They're simply choices. And we as human beings can change our mind anytime. Okay? So if we take off the stress of ask, answering our own question of, is this a good choice or a bad choice? Oh, I don't know if this is gonna be a bad choice. There's no such thing. It's not good or bad, it just is a choice. And when you're present with the choice, making good decisions based on the information you have at the time, odds are that those choices are gonna be in your favor, not good or bad, in your favor, uh, a lot more than they were in the past. Because bad stress and good stress is basically the same thing in your body. We hold on to bad stress much longer than we hold on to good stress. Therefore, when you're in that stress state for a longer period of time, it starts breaking the body down. Does that make sense? Mm. Right? And you both said yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the secret question, yeah. So. Once we understand that when I make a decision based on what, what information I have at the moment, I feel comfortable that, I, that the de decision is what I want with the right kind of uh, outcome. Now, if things change, uh, I get more information that made that decision not the outcome that I'm going to do. Now I get to do one of two things. I either continue on my way or I change it, okay? Hmm. And that that is my choice, not the outer world's. So hmm. acting and reacting in the world becomes a matter of being in yourself. What is best for myself? And that's not being selfish, that's being aware of yourself. For instance, in, in America, you'll, you'll notice my name is Earthwind. That is Chickamauga Cherokee for uh, his breath across the earth. In Native American culture, and a lot of cultures, um, they have a basic saying, you cannot give what you do not have. So in other words, uh, if you don't love yourself, then you're, you're probably not gonna love your wife. You're probably not gonna uh, give out a lot of love and therefore you're not gonna get love back, which is gonna make it worse, right? Mm. However, if you can switch that paradigm to loving yourself first, what's good for me first, like on the airplane when the, when the oxygen masses come out, put yours on first, then help people. Otherwise, everybody's going to be helped and you're dead. Not a good idea. So take care of yourself first. That's not being selfish. And um, let's say I give, I have love for myself. 
And Vivian, I give you love. That's one. And then Ha, I give you a love. That's two. And both of you give me love back. I get double what I just gave. So now you spread that out and it exponentially starts coming in, in, in large amounts. Well, that, that basis was happening in 2019, uh, just before the COVID was going on. And I was looking at uh, making the consortium model uh, and creating the division in, in the, the company. So it's kind of a long response to Ha's question, but that's where we got there.